welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up, what's up, what's up people, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, it is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of, I was about to say Stadia Dosage, but no, this ain't it, it's Hard Knock Digital Culture. I know that tickles my boy Cold Blood since he, uh, since, since they fancy the study. You want me to do a stated doses, Cold Blood? Let me know in the chat, man. <laughs> no, Cold Blood's giving me, uh, he's giving me heck in the chat because I apologize, people. There's something going on with this loot, this loot chat, the free messaging app. You know what I'm saying? Um, hopefully it'll work itself out. You know, it's, if we can, once we find a better alternative, we will definitely utilize it. You know, you guys know how I am. Y'all, y'all have seen me grunt and moan and do all types of stuff here uh, numerous times when we've encountered inferior third-party applications. You know what I'm saying? So believe you me, trust me. Um, once we find something that operates better, we will definitely utilize it. But I want to thank everybody that's in the chat that's watching right now. I want to thank everybody that is here, uh, either on demand or after the fact. We don't forget about y'all, you know what I'm saying? Um, joining us week to week, you know, and then we're going to be more frequent with the game streams. And let me just back up a little bit. Let me just, you know, for those of you that are straggling along because we've been able to, we, we've been accepting a, in a few more gamer groups. So we've been sending out radio blasts to them to let everybody know that we're here and that we exist. So if you're new to this platform, this is the Hard Knock Digital Culture. What we do here is we highlight hardcore gaming, hardcore cinema, which includes martial arts and hardcore anime. Now, followers of this platform said, where the hell is the hardcore anime and the hardcore martial arts? It's coming. Working with my Triple B brethren. There is the first is going to be a martial arts show that we're going to be doing on a periodic basis. So stay tuned for that. And then once we work out the kinks on the anime thing, um, because that anime thing is going to be extravagant, then you'll start seeing some of the anime material as well. But for now, you know, we got gaming and pretty soon we're going to have, um, again, start kicking off with the martial arts and the anime for the additional content. Mm. How's everybody doing? Let me know in the chat as well. I want to big up to everybody that I see so far. Cold Blood Sensei, you know what I'm saying? My homie Heath Stevens, doing it up. Thank you very much. I appreciate y'all for joining me and showing y'all support. Heath Stevens was like, yo, MM2K, you got a premiere this and a premiere that and this and that and, and a dibbly gook. Uh, <laughs> what the hell are you live? We are now officially live every Tuesday around 11 a.m. If things go right, you know, between 11 a.m. and 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. We were doing this every Monday. However, the homie uh, Neethals, you know, I, I, I wanted to free up Monday for Neethals. It's a lot better show with Neethals involved. Um, we're going to work something out soon. But right now, Mondays is when we do the Best Damn Podcast on uh, Next Gen 720's channel. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. Um you know, and I, I, I'll say this, you know, um, Nethel's is the single most important factor in that show. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you guys enjoy the show. We had a great show last night. Check it out. Definitely. I'll leave a link to that too soon. Um, but he, he, he's behind making sure that all the pizzazz and sizzle happens behind that show. So even though he's not chopping up videos, Definitely send Nethel a kudos. Thank him for that because a lot of that production value that he oversees and he makes sure it happens is, is again, all because of him. So he's, he's you know, we, we're there for, like Otis said, <laughs> which is next gen. He said, y'all, y'all here for Otis. But all that production value and all that stuff behind Otis would not be there um, if it wasn't for Nethel. So big ups to him. You know what I'm saying? Um before we get into the thick of things, because like I said, we got, you, you may have seen my teaser from my YouTube channel where um, we uh, talked about me 
rating the GTR fan. I want to talk about that because that's that's a great show, GTR Gamer Tag Radio. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to get into that very soon. And then I'm going to talk about game delays. I want to talk about E3 a little bit. Um, and then a whole bunch of, just a bunch of stuff to cover, but I, I promise you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better guys. I think I'm getting better. I don't think this is going to be the two and a half hour affair like it norm, like it normally is because I want to get into some game streaming. You know what I'm saying? I want to eat. Normally I'm doing all this stuff. Um, and I don't eat until like five in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? When I got to do my runs and stuff like that. So we, 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 we going to get a little bit more efficient around here. Um, but before we get into that, man. Uh, big up to the PlayStation bras. Big ups to them. The PlayStation bras have supplied us with a great, great trailer. I mean, it's not the best quality, but it is what it is. It's a great trailer um, for uh, Godfall. So what we're going to do right now, folks, is we're going to play that trailer. Okay, there we go. We're going to play this trailer. Here it goes. I didn't expect it to pop up so soon. But here it goes. This gameplay trailer of Godfall. Check it out. What y'all think of that, man? What did y'all... Uh-oh, let me, let me stop this before more crazy stuff pops up and y'all hear a whole bunch of... But what did y'all think of that? I don't know about y'all. But I thought that was pretty damn good. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of MM2K. You know, big up to Nethos again. Just as I just as I gave him all this credit, all this heartfelt tear jerker credit, I'm gonna throw his punk ass under the bus now. <laughs> um, we're hearing stuff like MM2K. That God fought on like nothing that can be done on the second gen. Just such and such. I'm gonna play it again. Should I play it again? No, nah, y'all didn't see it. Let me know if chat y'all want me to play it again. Hey, Cold Blood Sensei said, "Awesome, f Halo." Look, man, not only did it look good, but I saw it. Okay, let me back up a little bit. First and foremost, again, big ups to PlayStation Bros. They could only get footage, it appears, at 480p. So you're not going to see textures pop. You're not going to see sharp resolutions. But if you do play games and you're familiar with the top of the line console tech, as far as like user and I'm not talking about knowing all the Bibble Watts and the gigahertz. We don't do that here. I'm talking about understanding the feel and the touch of it. You can tell that with the lighting and the movement and stuff like that, that that is above what we're currently getting. You don't see the movement and lighting like that. So don't, don't compare that bump down 480 resolution to say, oh, that's, you know, I can get the same thing out of God of War. You got lighting effects and stuff like that that you, I, I, I haven't seen this generation on a console. So it looks cool. It looks great. And, um, you know, I, I can't wait to see all of the technology, all the next gen technology behind it. And we're going to talk about that because really that's a perfect segue into our next section. Um, you know, where I talk about where I invaded gamer tag radio, you know what I mean? Uh, he, Steve, um, he, Steve says, it look awesome. And they actually show gameplay. And he said, the particle affects my God. Exactly. Cold blood. That's what I'm talking about. But they're saying, Halo looks good. Look, Halo, Master Chief look like 
He smoked about five packs of ghouls and just dumped a whole ashtray on himself. <laughs> that looked trash. That, I, I was not excited about that at all. Now, they did show the tech demo that was nice, real nice and sharp in resolution. But again, man, I'm, I got I to gotta see end product. And that right there that we were shown, my friends, looked like end product. It was gameplay. You know what I mean? So until I start seeing some in, uh, some 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 end product models, I don't trust anything that Microsoft is proposing as far as they can be thrown. Right. That being said, um, that's a perfect segue into what I want to talk about next. And uh, let's see here. Homie Cold Blood Sensei also says. Uh, only not one and two has better particle effects. <laughs> Laugh my ass off. <laughs> and he, Steven says, I wonder if junk box guys are worried about Halo because they really haven't shown us that much. Exa yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, we, look, I'll say this, that Microsoft is kind of getting it as far as putting on a show with a game or two like that Gears 5 presentation and the game all together. It's not bad. It's not bad. I haven't I haven't been excited to play it, so I haven't touched it since Nikos and Noah was trying to bribe me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> try, try, try to trick me with some male older brides and stuff like that, try to bribe me to, to, to play the game with them. I, I, I mean, it's, it's Gears. What, 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 what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? So, they know how to put on a presentation. They know how to show stuff, but it's what they showed Really that fantastic. I, I don't know. That, that's Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and I haven't seen anything that impressed me. All right. That's it, my friends. That is a perfect segue. A perfect, perfect segue into our first segment. Okay. Um. So, Gamer Tag Radio. Y'all see it very much. Uh, Y'all see it very much so in the title. Yes. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Gamer Tag Radio, it is a podcast, one of the biggest gaming podcasts that is out there. Um, it is hosted by Danny Pena, um, Paris Lilly, and a homie Pete Rock, even though Pete Rock is because of work, he has to travel. So he's like, he's sporadic on shows. But the trio and more like, and more. So recently, the duo, in my opinion, provide great content. Um, and I love GTR. I've been listening and calling over the last few years sporadically. More, I, I, I call in bundles. You know what I'm saying? Like when we're in like critical points in time in gaming, you know, and I'm done, and and, and I'm I'm in I'm in a uh, console war muck with you guys, you filthy console warrior. No, I'm just joking. I, I love you guys. But when I when I'm done there, I like to clean myself off a little bit and go head over to Gamer Tag Radio and just throw a little bit of this stuff at them and get get their thoughts on it because I love how they break stuff down. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't call all the time. I I find myself calling, leaving a fan mail. In, in, in chunks of time, you know what I'm saying? Like this was, this really was my third phone call in a, in three months, you know what I'm saying? So I'll call like once a month for a couple months and I'll stop for a while and I'll call, you know, once a month for a couple, you know what I'm saying? With that being said, one of the things I like to do is razz Paris a little bit because Paris is very opinionated, right? Um, and I don't agree with, pretty much anything <laughs> that Paris says. However, the way that he breaks stuff down, just, just his whole presence is, is fantastic as a podcaster. And I can appreciate it. Somebody that's done, you know, worked in mine. I almost gave it away to y'all. Golly, I almost got myself in a bunch of trouble. <laughs> and someone has been working in, the, in my industry for 22 plus years. I've, come to really appreciate differing opinions. Um, I've managed managers. Um, done a whole bunch of stuff. I've, I've dealt with people. I've dealt with, with, with associates that the company said, look, you are, you're the last stop. If you can't get this person together, then 
you know what I mean? Then there's no hope for them, you know, because they've had problems all over the place. So we're leaving them with you. They're in your hands now and you make the determining factor. And I'm never one that I don't I don't get a joy from saying, you know, go home, pack your bags. I'll try my best to work with you, but I do have strict uh, contingencies that you got to follow. And as long as I make it, I try to be very transparent. And as long as, you know, I'm transparent, you're transparent, we're being honest with each other, and you're at least working towards the goal, I'll work with you, I'll coach you. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that entails having to deal with people with differences of opinions, being as calm and stone-faced as possible, and then just waiting for them to regurgitate all their bibble babble, then you give hit them with reality. And I don't mean to sound sarcastic or snide or, or arrogant, but in reality, a lot of people that do have difficulties in places of employment or wherever where they're dealing with other individuals have so because they're stuck in a silo mentally. They're, they're looking at things through the wrong prism and they just don't know um, how to operate with the team. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, you, you know, people need individual coaching. But all that being said, I'm, I'm not taking you down the 22 plus year history of uh, career of MM2K. The reason why I say that is even though I don't agree with Pierce's gaming philosophy, I respect his approach as a podcaster and how he breaks things down. So what I like to do is, you know, I'll razzle him a little bit. I'll go online and shoot something. What about this person? You said this and nothing and get his response to all this stuff. A couple of times, it, it, it never got heated because Paris never let it get that, that way. He's always been respectful to me. He's been a great guy. Been respectful to me even when I was my most bombastic towards him because y'all know me on, on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can get... I, I can get a little little <laughs> little mucky here and there, right? you know, for lack of a better term. All right. But with all that, all those pleasantries said, let's fast forward to now. Um, and how this call came about. So we got this whole no gamer left behind proposal by Xbox. That was always a topic of discussion. All right. And the argument was always, why is Xbox going to support older hardware? even longer than normally done by PC. I mean, the first iteration of this was like prior to Mike Yabarro leaving was um, uh, um, what had happened? What show? Oh yeah, there the, the was, it wasn't the show. I'm getting ahead of myself. What happened first was they talked about forwards and backwards compatibility. And what forwards compatibility basically means is that I got a Xbox X one X version of the game. I can take that same disc and it'll play on the new console. All of them will play on the new console, meaning that stuff will be scaled up. You know what I'm saying? And at first that was a great proposal for the consumer. But as we got closer and closer to the new generation, people are saying to themselves, hold on. If I'm paying all this money for a new console, I don't just, I don't want the technology that you put on the old disc the old way just to be scaled up a resolution bump. We got that with the X. Like I want nuanced experiences that you can only provide via the, uh, the, the, the this new generation console, especially if I'm paying, you know, five, $600 for this thing. Right. So that became a question. Right. And what I did is I took, like I said, what I do with Gamertag Radio, Paris was, was engaged in a discussion on Twitter about prices. And I thought it was an interesting thread. So I chimed in and I said, well, um, gave my thought about the prices. And then I also posed the question to Paris and I said, hey, um, what about this whole parody thing, right? You know, and Paris was in the belief at the time, and, and, and I don't want to... This is from my understanding. He was in a belief that no issue, no technical issues at all, you know, no big deal, um, you know, because they scale up, right? And because they can scale up or scale down, that everything is going to be okay from a, from a technical aspect, not just visual from a technical aspect. That's what I got from what he said. But I, I just... it. Knowing what I know, which I don't know a lot, I'm not going to, again, I'm not the Bibblewatt expert. I focus more on end user reaction and stuff. I don't care about dyes on chips. I don't care about that stuff. It, it means nothing to me because at the end of the day, I care about the end user stuff. 
Can I sit down, take the time and figure that stuff out? Yeah, but it's a way to me. And I am a steward of knowledge. I love learning stuff. I always wake up every morning with the mindset that there's something new I could learn. But that right now, when we're in this critical time, this critical impasse where we're saying to Xbox, what can you do to turn things around with public perception? The Bible Watts and the Gigahertz was taught that sucked people in and provided a smoke screen with the Xbox One X. And then we got Super Lucky's Tales and a niche racer game at launch. Uh-uh, not this time around. I only care about the end user aspect of it. I don't care about the die on the chip in the, in the, uh, the, the, the Giggle Twats. I don't care about none of that, all right? So, but even though with the little bit that I do know, it didn't make sense to me that you can not only scale resolution and graphics, which I get, but implementation, in-game implementation, things that you can do. And I reckon all the way back to even games that were not that popular, like, 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 uh, well, to me, they were pop. I thought they were good, but you know, I guess over time they didn't age well. Perfect Dark Zero. There were just certain things that you can do that I knew you couldn't do on previous generation consoles, like how they had the dual, um, um, functionality with the weapons like the machine the, the laptop machine gun and all the other crazy stuff and the fact that you can leave certain areas and things would be in certain places you never saw that last generation and more particularly when whenever you would recon an area when you would scope it on a person and it would read the biometric meter of everybody individual stuff like that just wasn't possible on last generation hardware when it came to consoles even little stuff like that then we get in the call of duty too you know what I'm saying? Which was a console exclusive for the 360. Um, it had that via metric fog thing, that implementation, and that played a lot in how you handled the gameplay because if you could see your enemy or not, now that's more of a visual aspect, but it kind of plays in into the game design as well because it had, it had uh, an impact on how you would engage the enemy. That wasn't possible via the 360. You know what I'm saying? So I remember stuff, and it just didn't make sense to me, right? But when I talked to Paris and I tweet, about that that's what i gathered from paris but it was cool paris was cool about it for the record he was cool and he went about his business but it was the other responders in that twitter feed they weren't mean or nasty but they were very dismissive and kind of snide you know what i'm saying and they shot down what i was saying which you know i felt like had some rooting in it they shot it down so they said they were saying stuff like, oh, man, you just don't know how this works, you know, and I and that I hear that often because I may not be the most elegant with my words on how they flow when it comes to this stuff, because. At work, I am, but here I take off my shoes, I let my bunion show I look the, the MM2K suit and tie MM2K that gets hung up. The, the the neck bone in the mouth sucking the teeth and watching <laughs> watching it swear at the sports shows mm2k comes out when I'm home I, look I I don't need to do what I do for a paycheck here I, I'm, I'm, I'm to be relaxed here I'm to be myself I'm to be transparent you know what I'm saying so when I'm being relaxed and transparent I'm not gonna get into I'm not gonna get into the suit and tie talk that's just me I could be like everybody else if y'all want and carry clarinets all day during podcasts. I could do that silly, stupid, silly stuff if y'all wanted me to. But then I say to myself, what would separate me from the 20,000 other podcasters out there that are just regurgitating the same news the same way? You know what I mean? So I, I, at the very least, I hope you appreciate that I don't do that. But with that being said, they were they putting on their suit and tie talk and they were so dismissive of what I had to say, like it didn't make any sense. Like, nope, they were dismissive of it and didn't answer the question. You know what I'm saying? Like I, and, and as I was saying, like I hear often, that's why I snidely put up the moniker MM2K knows no tech because in these DMs, they, oh, MM2K, you don't know. But at the end of the day, it's all about what the end user experience is. So all those bibble watts and all that stupid stuff that y'all talking, transistor, uh, compute nental and all that stupid stuff, it means nothing. It meant nothing for the X and it doesn't mean nothing for any other product without the software that's, that's desired. All right, enough with that babble. So that's what happened there. That's the history of all this. All right, so now leading up to the phone call, which I'm going to play for you guys shortly. Um, what led up to the phone call was after that had transpired on Twitter, you know, we went, I went about my business, doing my shows and covering other topics. And then out of nowhere, the Matt Booty 
interview, the infamous interview with MCV, uh, where he's talking parody. That pops up, right? Where he's talking about how, um, you know, for the first few years, excuse me, the first few years, Xbox, you know, upon release, the Xbox games um, are not going to be exclusive to the hardware. That anything, any game that you can get on the Series X, you're going to be able to get on the other family of consoles. Now, what I imagine that they're going to do is they'll just, you know, it'll be an up res. If you get a digital copy, it'll be an up res upscale digital copy that you get from the store or it might, you know, it might be labeled differently. You know what I mean? Um, or you're going to, you know, the, the, you might get different type of discs. Like there might be an Xbox series disc version opposed to an Xbox one. There may or may not be, who knows, who knows, you know, we'll find out once we get a reveal or something like that. But with that being said, there are going to be no titles that are specific to the series X, right? Everything that you get a series X, you can get on the Xbox one family of consoles. Okay. And that caused a lot of ire on the internet. And then to follow up digital foundry, then went back and kind of set light again to the concerns that I voiced when I was in that, that Twitter feed. And they said, look, there are concerns of parody. And on top of the examples that I gave you with perfect dark zero and call of duty Two, they talked about rise. They talked about how a game like Rise, if there was parody, and Rise has a multiplayer component to it. So let's just say if the No Gamer Left Behind uh, initiative was was active between the three <laughs> the 360 and the Xbox One, right? Because, and, and let me preface it with this, because I hear a lot of arguments that say, well, it's the shell processor, and because of the sound processor, this, that, and the other, and that's what's causing the bottleneck to cause this and that. And that, but but they're gonna they're gonna scale it, so that's not gonna have anything anything to do with anything in the Bible watching the gigahertz, right? That's that's what I hear. But then that gets thrown under the bus. That old theory and that old mindset gets thrown under the bus for the simple fact that Digital Foundry gave you examples of what when um. For Rise. Now, Rise has a multiplayer component. So imagine the stuff that's being done in Rise that can't be done on the 360 that was done on the Xbox One. Just imagine if they said there is going to be, we're, we're, we're going to, no console left behind. Rise is going to be available for both systems and for both families. And therefore, it's going to be cross play, like how what Microsoft is proposing right now. I imagine in order for that cross play to work, those development factors that went into the implementation of Rise that could only be done on the Xbox One would have to be thrown out because you're not going to be able to do that on a 360 version. So how in the hell do you have a multiplayer where half of the people can do something, but the other half can't? Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the biggest concern. And being that games as a service is a big staple of the Xbox brand and the type of games they like to develop right now, the question then beckons, how do you develop a game like Halo, for instance, that's going to have multiplayer, that can do badass shit, excuse my friends, you know what I'm saying, that is only prevalent to the X, but not the X, I mean, prevalent to the Series X, but not the Xbox One X. I'm not just talking about visuals, you know what I'm saying? I'll give you another example, Dead Rising. Dead Rising allowed you to have so many zombies on the screen and you know not change the, the gameplay mechanic that it couldn't do on the 360 what if that had a multiplayer com component and then they said no gamer left behind so there was a dead rising 3 for the 360 dead rising 3 for the xbox uh, one how do you do that multiplayer like that another example horizon zero dawn that they brought up horizon zero dawn for the playstation 4 which has the same Bottleneck Jaguar cord, the Bimba Watson and Gigahertz that everybody wants to use as an excuse. Um that that um 
that game was supposed to have flying in it. But because of the Jaguar core, the flying was not possible in, Hori in Horizon Zero Dawn on the PlayStation 4. So guess what? Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is likely going to have what? Flying. It's likely also going to have what? A multiplayer component. And guess what it's not <laughs> going to be cross-play with? The PlayStation 4. Because that implementation isn't possible on that family of consoles. So then, I figured in light of all this, so, so the question beckons. If that is the case, if you have certain implementation that you just can't scale up and scale down to support, then what are you getting from your new $500 and $600 box that really makes the box sing opposed to resolution, <laughs> you know, a, a resolution box? And that's a legitimate question that a lot of people started to say in these gaming streets that I saw that were originally part of the 45 million that watched the release or the um, the reveal of the Xbox Series X on the Game Award show. And they said, ooh, ooh, that tickles me fancy. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in that. I might want to pick that up. That thing looks powerful. It speaks power. Thinking not just better looking games because if they were just worried about better looking games and 4k games they would have all flocked to the x they're thinking these this powerful machine is going to give you grandiose experiences beyond just resolution and visuals that's what they're thinking that's how the casuals think sometimes i think we get so connected and our silos here as the, the, the hardcore gamer, the one to 5% that we lose our connection to the, the average gamer. And I say this a lot to my Xbox brethren that I go back and forth with in these chats. You know what I'm saying? You're disconnected. You're siloed. You've been a staunch hardcore Xbox guy. You felt some type of way about the media coverage. You put yourself in a silo so you can get good media coverage on the X. So you only listen to this show, this show, and that show. Meanwhile, there's a boatload of other stuff going on around you. The mindset of the casual gamer is locked in this way, and you can't relate. Doesn't mean that you can't comprehend, but you've locked yourself in, 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 in a box. And we don't communicate regularly with the casuals to understand what type of ramifications that's going to have. And I'll get into that, but hold on. So I figured in light of all this, all this stuff that I was hearing, all the conversations that I was hearing from people, all the questions that I was getting, like my brother called me up. This was really sparked a phone call. Actually, I actually recorded this video hot off in a phone conversation with my brother. My brother called me and he said, yo, bro. I was like, what's up? He said, um, can we game share? I said, sure. I said, uh, and I'm thinking because he has a PC. He's a, he's a PC gamer. So I said, sure. So I'm like giving him my Xbox information so we can set up the game shit. He's like, no, no. He's like, I, I didn't get an Xbox. I got a PlayStation 4. I said, what? I said, you got a PlayStation 4? He said, yeah. Now, the reason why that's so surprising is because me and my brother used to be roommates. Um around when the Xbox, the OG Xbox came out all the way up until the 360, like halfway through the 360 period. And all we did was drink, party, and BS. You know how the Biggie song goes. <laughs> and play games. We'll, we'll add that, that, that's, that's the MM2K remix. I'll add that in there. That's all we did. And we were some serious Xbox fanboys, even though we had everything. We had everything. <laughs> Cold Blood Sensei says, your brother has a brain. <laughs> oh, so I was left without the brain. So, and he know, and he listens to my material, you know what I'm saying? And he listens to w what I do, you know? And so he, he knows that how I am about the different consoles and stuff like that. And he asks me a lot of questions all the time. So when he told me that he got a new console, that he finally broke broke down and got a console, 
I was like, oh, wow. And I'm just assuming it was, it's an X. I thought, I thought he got an X. There's some decent deals on the X. And just from our history, I, I just, no, it was PlayStation 4. It's a PlayStation 4. I said, what the hell? I said, what did, you, what, what did you get that for? Even though, truth be told, I played my PlayStation 4 over the last two, three months more than I played my Xbox. I still play Fallout 76. You know what I'm saying on it? Through remote play. So, he said, he said, no, man. He said, look, bro, look, I'm not dropping all that money for something that don't have games. And I said, well, what about it, the X bot in me kicked? In. I was like, well, what about Game Pass? He said, he said, bro, those is old ass games that I've already played and beat. I beat them on PC. So why, why, why would I even waste money on that? My, my brother's a lot more fruit. He's not, he's not as invested in this as I am. You know what I'm saying? Financially, you know, he knows what he wants to play. And he, he's not going to kill himself to play. I, I'm, I, I've already played those games. And he said, you know, if I sign up to PSN plus, I can get two free games. And I've been watching those two free games, bro. He said, you ain't the only person that I listen to. And he's gaming streets. You've introduced me to a bunch of other people. And I've been seeing these PlayStation plus games. And all I got to do is just keep my subscription. And I get that. I ain't got to invest in no game flash, no game flash. I said, wow. I said, but bro, this is what this is what really kicked me. And this is what really spawned my car. I said, but bro, if you're now invested in the, in the Xbox ecosystem or in the console ecosystem again, because I thought he was going to skip it this whole generation. We both was going to do that. And I, and I gave in. I broke. Because of Destiny, we were playing Destiny on Xbox 360, mad crazy. And then they were coming up with that new content. And I was like, I gotta, have, I was fiending for, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. And I went and got an Xbox One instead of converting to PC like how he did too. He just gave up on that. When, when, when the content stopped, he just gave up on it, and went to something else. I, I, I was in dire need of it, so I broke and I got an Xbox One. So I said to him, I said, bro, I but you're so late in the game. What about? Getting the Xbox Series X because I figured that he might want the more powerful. He said, "Bro, let, let me explain something to you. If I want power, I'm going to play my PC. There's nothing that Xbox provides." He said, "He said, bro, get over it. It's not like, bro. He said, bro, you latch on to stuff too much. Get over it. Them days when me and you was drinking, playing the Rainbow Six Vegas, and you know, loving Mass Effect and playing get those days is gone. I can tell you, bro. This Phil Spencer guy that you informed me of, he no, he's not built like that. Those days is done. They're like a well done steak. Stick a fork in it. They do not produce the content that me and you like. He said, I hear you preaching on that. He said, I, I have no hope in them. I have no hope in them. And if there's anything that I like from Xbox, I'm going to buy it all a cart on the PC. He said, I just, he said, just, just really nothing off for PC right now. I had some money to burn in my pocket and I've got me a, a PlayStation on the cheap for two thirty, So now I can experience those games. You know what I'm saying? And now that, now that I'm late in the generation, I can get them for cheap. He said, but there's no, I don't plan to buy anything Xbox. He said, those days is done, bro. It's not like, man, those are the days where you, you can imagine seeing an Xbox ad with somebody jumping out of a, a you know what I'm saying, j jumping out of a cap from behind a couch, crushing a beer can on her head. Those, those, those days is over, bro. He said, you get over it. Get over it. It's over. I said, damn. And he said, then he said, yeah. And I saw where you were talking about digital foundry. And they're being parody. He said, I saw that box. He said, I'm telling you right now, that box ain't going to be no less than no $600. Now, he told me seven. I said, you come on, bro. He said, but he's not that familiar with this gen generation. He said, that box is not going to be less than $700, $600. I said, what? I said, so, okay, well, what's wrong? He said, well, because. Why am I, why am I buying the $600 box? And the first few years that they're coming out with stuff, it's not going to be like when me and you was playing Perfect Dark. And we were like, oh, sh snap. You can't do this on the, on the Xbox One. Like, I remember we didn't get the Xbox 360, number one, 
We didn't get it at first because we don't buy stuff normally off the assembly belt when it first, because that's when it's the first, but that's when it's the, the fault is. He taught me that. My brother was 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 high level at an um, um, internet firm way back in the day. He taught me all the technical stuff that I know, that I do know. You know what I'm saying? And he said, you never buy new hardware when it first released because that's when it's the most faultiest. So we waited six months. But even waiting that six months, we were Larry because we still had these Xbox One games. I mean, these original Xbox games that we were enjoying. I think Snowblind and some other... Uh, um, I think uh, Doom 3 had just came out and some other stuff that came out around the same time. And we was like, no, man, you know. But then I brought one home. I didn't bring two home like I normally do. I went and brought one home. And my brother got a taste of that Prey and that Quake 4 that had 50 levels to it. You wasn't getting nothing like that on the OG Xbox. Then he got a taste of that Call of Duty 2. And his life was changed. <laughs> we, he did not fire up that egg, that original Xbox ever again, ever, 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 ever again. Because the stuff that was happening, and in mind you, we had a powerful, what was considered a powerful PC at the time. So it wasn't just a, based off of graphics. It was based off of implementation, gameplay, game style that was being um, shown off and the new system that wasn't possible anywhere else. That's what changed his life. He didn't care about the old games. He didn't care. It was all about the new experiences. So that's what spawned me. I said, you know what? And then I had listened to Gamer Tag Radio a day prior. Um or no, earlier that morning. I had listened to Gamertag Radio earlier that morning. And then I said, you know what? I don't think we're having the discussion in a way that we should. I think we're like glossing over stuff and we're not hitting the kit. We're not hitting the nail on the head because Gamertag Radio had an episode where they were like, you know what? The exclusive content on Xbox, even though I love the way they laid it out. I love the show as usual. I thought it had missed this segment of gamer like my brother that, you know, got woke on the Xbox again when he saw the Series X reveal only to be disappointed. And my brother's not the only one. You know, once they start talking this parody, parody talk, people are like, well, what's the, why am I getting this? If you're not providing me, people know that. There is some content, not all of it, not a lot, not even most, but some content that shows off, that gives you a taste of what you're getting as far as gameplay implementation. And when you take that away, you defeat the purpose of your box. So I took that message and I took it to Gamer Tag Radio. You know what I'm saying? Because I figured in light of this, let me bring it to one of my favorite podcasts because agree or not, I love how they break stuff down, period. Um, I'm going to play for you this phone call because it's a, it's great. I love it. It was fantastic, funny. Paris taking shots at me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, no, but no, I deserve it for all the hell that I've given them. But I want y'all to listen to this because um, it's very interesting. But before I do, let me go to the chat. Um. Uh, Cold Blood says they said Fallout laugh my ass off. And then he Steven says that people can say what they want, but PlayStation Now is a better deal than Game Pass. Um, I'm not, a, I, I don't know because of, because of the whole, what is it, 720? It's still 720? You, 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 you're, you're playing games in? 720 is just ugly, bro. It might be, if it's 1080 now, 1080 can be done, but, uh, um, you know, they're, they're going to get there though. They're definitely going to get there. Their lineup. I mean, if they do day and date, their lineup is, it's a, it's a no brainer, <laughs> but that, you know, it, it, so, uh, and he says, yes, EA sports sucks balls. And I'm worried about the rest of Europe EA games and the studios because who ran FIFA is now in charge of those studios. All right. I'm gonna play this video for y'all. I mean, play this audio for y'all. 
And uh, let me know what y'all think at the end of it. So let's go. Uh-oh. Hold on. Mute it. First. We're getting there, people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Now let's do it. In front of 45 million people. Hold on. Let me go back a little bit. Let me go back. Video Game Awards in 2019. Let me go back a little bit. Xbox Gamer myself. Well, it's the least popular console, really, this whoa, generation. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I can admit that as an expert. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second here. I thought... I'm not... Did I not timestamp the right spot? Uh-uh. It's 20... Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I'm a... Hold on, I thought it was 2403. I was gamer myself. So, you have the Video Game Awards in 2019. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna get there. I thought I had it. Give me one moment. He did a Kickstarter campaign. No, I've been saving. Fantastic. Okay. Keep up the good work. That big oh, episode come on. Stop just this drop. Fantastic. Email. Let's do it. So we're going to start okay. with these. All right, here uh, we are. Okay, go. Okay. All right. We got it. We found it. My apologies. Uh, and let's play it right now. The ones that I have here that I sent you. So fan mail. Let's do it. Fan mail at GamertagRadio.com Hey guys, it's your boy MM2K and I'm back. Hey, that Xbox Series X episode that you guys just dropped, fantastic. Keep up the good work. That being said, I think there's a very important group that we're overlooking while we're having this discussion. So the Xbox console isn't the most popular console. It's the least popular console, really, this generation. And I can admit that as an Xbox gamer myself. So you have the Video Game Awards in 2019 in front of 45 million people, again, consisting of people that don't follow Xbox regularly. These people see the Xbox Series X reveal and their jaws are dropped. They're like, 2020, I want to pick up that thing. That thing looks powerful. They're all by Hellblade 2. Then you fast forward a couple of weeks to now people are saying that the launch lineup could quote unquote be hamstrung due to parity with older hardware. Okay. And this just isn't coming from uh, console fanboys. This is coming from people like John Linneman of Digital Foundry. So to those people that have those concerns legitimately, what would you say to ease their contention towards this whole exclusive talk? All right. And do you think this has become big enough for Xbox to come back out after the Matt Booty interview and clarify again. And lastly, Paris, Cyberpunk 2077 content. Get to it, man. It would be awesome. All right. Y'all have a wonderful gaming day. So thank you for that voicemail. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I wanted to play this one first for a couple reasons. The first one is when he, he starts with, hey, it's your boy. I, I tweeted the other day. That is probably my favorite annoying phrase ever on YouTube. <laughs> The hell with you, Paris. <laughs> so I say it. So I say it all the time now, just for that. But but no, that's all, all good. But he brings up a valid question uh, with 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 the Series X, you know, and the games, and the, and the fact that they're you know Matt Booty. We we talked about this already, but the non exclusive of Series X in year one or year two, however you you want to look at it. My thing is is simply this, and I watched a Digital Foundry video on it as well, and it was interesting to see the differing opinions on that. And the main thing is potentially the CPU, the Jaguar CPU in the Xbox One could hold back what exclusive games could be on the Series X until they fully shift everything to the Series X. I get that. But kind of like what Richard was saying in that same video, let's just take Halo Infinite as an example, because that is kind of just the big red flag that we're looking at when, when it comes to the first year of exclusive games for series X and that it's been in development for how long at this point, they were probably making that game way before the series X was even announced or knew what the specs were going to be. So that game was going to be that game, regardless if it was exclusive to the series X or if it was going to be on Xbox one. And when I say that I'm talking about just level design and thing, things of that nature, how, how big the world may be, that was already set in stone before the series X specs. So CPU or not, we already knew what it was going to be. So when you look at it from that perspective, does it matter? 
I bring it back to this point. When you boot that game up in November, be it on the Xbox One, be it on the Series X, be it on the PC, are you having fun? That's what all of this should come down to. The the higher frames per second, the speedy load times, all that kind of stuff, It's that's great. That's what the new specs and the new hardware is going to bring. I get all that. But at the end of the day, are you having fun? That's all that matters, right? I That's the way I look at it. I, I try to not get caught up in this exclusivity nonsense that's been going on. And, and before you jump in, Danny, I'm, I'm going to pivot it into the, to the Horizon Zero Dawn nonsense that's happening because that basically got leaked out. You know, Jason Schreier put that out from Kotaku that, yeah, that rumor sounds like it is true. Horizon Zero Dawn is going to come to the PC in 2020. And the flipping outrage over that has been insanity. Who cares? What people are saying, though? It, it, well, there, there, there's a, a funny um, uh, tweet, tweet, post, picture, whatever you want to call it, where a guy is given the middle finger and he threw his copy of Horizon Zero Dawn for PlayStation 4 in the trash. And he was like, Sony, you're dead to me. And maybe it was a joke. Maybe he just did it for attention. But there are so many other comments surrounding that that people are acting like they're legitimately upset at Sony for bringing a three-year-old game to the PC. It's like, are you flipping kidding me? Bear with me. I would go past some of this because there's comments from Danny Pena that I think are prevalent too. Um, But bear with this. It it isn't too long. And it's it's still a great discussion altogether. Um, And I'm going to touch a little bit on the Horizon Zero Dawn thing too, but bear with it. It, it, It's going to, they're going to go through all their points soon. And then we'll, on, on the end of that, we'll talk about what they had to say. Who cares? If you own a PlayStation, if you play on the PlayStation 4, and this is just going that for a second. If you play on the PlayStation 4 and you enjoy playing games there, why do you care if that same game goes to another platform? It doesn't hurt your experience. It doesn't change your friendships with the friends that you play with. None of that. You keep playing on the damn platform that you're on. Why are you worried about where I play? Why are you worrying about where someone else plays? That do- It doesn't matter. If the game's fun and you're enjoying it, you enjoy it. It's your money. Play whatever the hell you want. And let's be real. It's not like PlayStation all of a sudden, day and date, are going to start bringing all their exclusive games to the PC. Day one, they're not doing that. that that's dumb. That, that, that wouldn't be smart business sense for them because their whole business model is built around having exclusive titles tied to their hardware so that you go buy their hardware and that's where you play. But a couple of years down the road, if they bring a God of War or an Uncharted Lost Legacy, as an example, to the PC or Spider-Man to the PC, does that really hurt you? No, of course not. Xbox's business model is different, obviously, and they're able to get away with this for one reason and one reason only. Guess what? They own Windows 10. You're playing you're playing on a Microsoft product no matter if you play on the PC or not. So, of course, they don't care day one if you're playing it on the PC or you're playing it on Xbox hardware. It doesn't matter to them. So to bring this all the way back to the original thing. Do I think these games are going to be hurt because they're not exclusive to the Series X on day one? No. And they're only doing it for a limited time window where it's going to take developers that amount of time anyways to fully unlock the potential of the Series X regardless. Same as it will be on the PlayStation 5. So it doesn't matter if the games are fun and I'm having a good time. That's all that matters. Where I play it shouldn't matter to anybody. Just enjoy the games. That's my thought on it. Exactly. Exactly. And I know he he mentioned about like, is it? the right time for Microsoft to come back and to clarify their statement about that. I'm like, yeah, sure. That could happen anytime, man. You know, but at the same time, I want people to relax and just wait and see what Microsoft and even Sony are planning to release for launch. We have no idea right now. We're just going crazy over stuff that we, we already know now, but they, they, they have a lot of stuff planned for November and also at E3, they're going to announce it, that we have zero idea. And why we why are we freaking out so much right now? In January 2020, the beginning of the year, it just, I, I don't know, it just, uh, people need to like take a, a chill pill and just relax. Everything is going to be fine. And then we'll find out later, later this year, all these games is coming out. And I bet you when those games get announced during E3 or another event, whatever everybody's going to be excited everybody's going to pre-order those consoles man so what what is the purpose of just freaking out and just going crazy on twitter 
over over this. I I just don't I have just no I have no idea, man. I bet you Paris people are gonna be yeah. excited about Halo when it gets announced and sh- and they of show course. actual dude, gameplay. Uh, dude, and that's the thing. It, like you said, it's January. When we get to June and they show they fully unveil Halo Infinite, do you really think are you gonna be that dude, your arms folded, sitting there in the crowd going, Well, well, if it would have been exclusive to the Series X, it would have looked even better than <laughs> this. Don't. No one's I gonna don't. say that. Everyone's Nobody. gonna be excited, man. Exactly. You, you know, one other thing with the PlayStation thing, you also gotta look at it from a business standpoint this way. They're bringing older games to potential customers that have clearly said i'm not going to buy a playstation right these are customers potential customers that are on the pc so you bring a horizon zero dawn to them they play horizon zero dawn guess what they just made money so when just made money because they just got someone to buy the game and Mm -hmm. maybe they like it so much and again rumor theory let's say horizon zero dawn is on the playstation 5 at launch now all of a sudden they're like wait maybe i should go buy a playstation 5 and now they go buy a PlayStation 5 because they want to continue the story that they started on the first Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm. Who knows? Or they continue to do this thing of games that are two, three, four years old on PlayStation. They put them on PC. And now, again, you're getting you are generating new revenue to an audience that was never going to play that game because they were never going to buy your hardware. You got to think you got to think big picture with this stuff. You know, it's not just about protecting the piece of plastic. You know, you got to hold on with your sword and shield, life or death. Oh, my God, they can't take my games to somewhere else. It's like, dude, who cares? Really? Who cares? It doesn't matter. And I'll say this as well. I understand a lot of the people that are getting upset about this are of a younger age, right? They're not an adult yet. So they they don't get the whole thing. I understand that. And 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 this isn't even at them because I'm not expecting the kid to understand all this stuff. But there's a lot of grown ass people that's doing this too. And that blows my mind. If you that's are sad. an adult yeah. and you're sitting here arguing about where someone plays their games, you have lost your damn mind. Where about paying your bills at home? Stop worrying about that. That's exactly. that's my opinion. Exactly. You, you know, the other day I was reading the top games of the decade. And of course, like you said, Paris, the GOAT, Call of Duty was on top, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and Grand Theft Auto. But there's one game that also is available everywhere. And it's just, uh, and it's, this is a Microsoft uh, game, Minecraft. It's available everywhere. PC, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox. Even mobile, it's everywhere. And Microsoft is making a lot of money because of it, man, you know? And Nintendo did a smart thing, too, with their with their games. They started releasing... Okay, so... I, the part is a lot longer than what I thought. I don't want to... Let me see if I can skim through it. He's seeing see. mobile... Probably that purchased uh, th- these games, these mobile games. Yeah. Very, very smart. Yeah. And then the last thing he said, he was talking about the cyber... Oh, okay. I talked. Okay. All right. So that was it. All right. So I'm going to read Cold Blood Sensei. Big up to the homie Cold Blood Sensei for supporting um, the podcast as usual. Um, He says, bots relax for seven years. This gen. Here's to another seven years of wait till next E3 tags, et cetera. TGS, et cetera. I'm sorry, but bots need to open their mouth. Uh, And then he had another message, which is, I hate Z's logic. Being a gamer means you have to have both PlayStation 5 and Series X. That's asked not how this we go. Yeah, how he disregards PC. I'm going to say this, Cold Blood. I do agree with, I'm going to address the first one about um, Z's approach there. Yeah, Z, Z's the console warlord. <laughs> but no, a game, nothing, owning nothing makes you a gamer. Gaming makes you a gamer. Okay, period. So I do agree with that. Gaming makes you a gamer. All right. And um, this whole sentiment that you got to do this in order to be a real gamer, I I don't believe. As long as you're playing games, as long as you're just not sitting on YouTube talking about them and you're playing games, or as long as you, you know, I mean, and and people, and when I say playing games, I mean, there's a subsect of people that have time on their hands, rather do other things, but pick up a controller. You know what I'm saying? They're not gamers, but they love talking about it because maybe they feel like they can fit in. They're not gamers. 
know what I'm saying? Talking about gaming doesn't make you a gamer. You could be interested in stuff and not make you a gay. I could talk about golf all day. Does that make me a golfer? No. I'm not a golfer unless I go out there and I play some golf at some level. So being a gamer is based upon your interaction with said activity. You know what I'm saying? And some people do it more frequent than others. I don't like putting that litmus on there. Well, you got a game every day. I mean, I do game every day. I've been, I've been reinvigorated in gaming. Even though PC is my preferred way to game, I'm dealing with a faulty video card. Y'all know it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, y'all didn't hear me chime about it a thousand times. And I've been invigorated because if I can't game on my PC and stream, I am now able to go on Stadia and stream and I can get to do it 60 frames per second and it looks good. So I get, I can now achieve the, uh, achieve the best of both worlds playing my game. You know what I'm saying? At a smooth frame rate and having it look good on my streams. You know what I'm saying? Now, once I get this video card fixed, you know, then I can do it with, with my PC once again. That being said, even, let's just say if I only game once a week, I'm a gamer. People, look, man, people have responsibilities. They have parents that they're taking care of, stuff like that. They can't pick up a joy. I'm, my, oh, my, uh, you know, my, my mom just went in the code red, but I still got to finish God of War. No, it don't work like that, man. It don't. <laughs> You, you got people, kids, grandkids, and some cases you got to take care of. Stuff you got to do, earn a living. You know, I don't, I don't like imposing those type of litmuses on gamers because I think it just goes, it's a little bit too extreme. Um, now, to your other question, box, relax for some, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, it's cold blood. That's a perfect segue into what I want to talk about now. Okay, so... And again, before I get into all this, big ups to Gamer Tag Radio. Um, it was a very interesting call, and I want to thank Danny and Paris, and again Pete Rock as well, uh, for playing my voicemail because they don't have to play it. Even <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, they could say oh, we're, it's him with his shit again. We're not playing this, you know. But big ups to them. I appreciate them. I appreciate the diversity of thought. Let, let me peel the onion back on this a little bit. I, um, and this is my message to Paris too. Paris, keep doing what you're doing. Whether me and you don't ever have to agree on anything, we don't have to agree if water's wet. We need voices like you, Dan, Danny. We need the people, my people in the chat, the people that communicate on your platform. We need all these diverse for, forces to come together to hash these things out because without diverse forces like that, you don't have things like what happened last generation. I mean, this generation at the beginning of that. We don't want DRM. We don't want it. On, and they pulled it back. You know what I'm saying? And that's a, a perfect segue into my com, into one of my subject matters I'm going to cover as well later. You don't get that unless you get diversity of conversation and discussion. And there's going to be some contention there. And some people might get out of pocket. And it's okay. It's okay. I think we could all wear our big boy and big girl pants or big put on our big or big kid shoes. We can handle a little muck here and there. It's okay. And that, don't get belligerent and call people out of their names. But you'll get some, oh, that's idiotic. And that's, you know what I'm saying? That's okay. It's okay. I don't mind it. It shows the passion in people. But the reason why I said that, and, and, and I catered this message to Paris, is that what you do is appreciated, agree with or not. I know there's people that may clench, they hear that, they may hear what you say and they may clench their fist. They may hear what you say and they, go, and they may raise their fist, yeah. But regardless, your voice is important because, and I say that because a, a, a while ago I was picking with Paris and he had said to me and Twitter, he had responded, he said, he said, I had responded, oh, what well, Paris says drive me crazy, but I love having, and he asked me, he said, seriously, why, why, why do I drive you crazy? And I'm like, no, it's okay though. It's a little contention is okay because that drives passion. We as humans are built a certain way for a certain reason. I don't have all the answers. I don't know. But what I can say is that because of how we are designed, certain things trigger certain types of activity or certain ways of responding and 
If somebody, oh, that makes me clench my fist. That doesn't mean I'm clenching my fist, grabbing my keys, and I'm coming to your house. It just means that, okay, now you've got my creative juices flowing. you got some of my combative juices flowing. I'm going to give you a counter narrative. And your voice is important just like everybody else's voice is important. And, and mine's is as well. You know, everybody's voice is important. It's that same competitive nature to where it's progressed, I feel, this discussion. I could have very easily, when not Paris, but the people in that thread were being dismissive, I could have very easily said, oh, well, okay, Bert. Well, they're making me feel bad, Bert. I don't, MM2K don't know no tech. I'm going to step back from this to lead us. No. When the discussion got reinvigorated, and I talked to my brother and I heard Game of Tag Radio. I said, let me take this. Let me go to um, Paris and, 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 and Danny and Pete and pose this question and get their thoughts on it in, in lieu of additional information coming out being solidified by Digital Foundry. You don't want to take it from him. You can't take it from what are the thoughts? And that was their response. And I think it was a great response. And in lieu of that, so my message to not just Paris, but everybody, your voice is important. A little contention is okay. Those creative juices and some of that combativeness help spawn like serious thought. Like it makes, hold on, hold on. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of pressure sometimes, a little, little tense, intensity in the thought process, you know, spawn some great ideas. All right. Nothing wrong with that. That being said, Excellent episode altogether besides that. Check out Gamer Tag Radio. If you're not listening to them, you're not in the know. I have a litany of, no, I'm lying. I have a few podcasts outside of the ones that we do at Broadband Bullies and PNTS Network um, that I listen to, right, um, on the mainstream level. I listen to uh, Rebel FM. Now, I'm warning you, Rebel FM is a nerd's podcast the nerd you know is your favorite podcasters podcast those are people that are well in, in embedded in knowledge of gaming they have a they have a a, a a lineage and they know their stuff they come from the original gmr magazine all over the one up and so forth and talking to them you're getting some real in-depth well in-depth stuff and it may not be the the super mudslinging show that we we provide you at triple b but you know, it. You know, they're comical in their own way, but you get a you get hammered with a lot of information, and I love information more than anything. Um. Then I can't. I can't lie. Uh, another mainstream podcast of mine that I listen to regularly is Podcast Unlocked. Um. I have to give a big credit to IGN. The, la- the, the, the the earlier part of this generation, they were not stewards of knowledge and information. And even though they have experiences and I mean or relationships rather that privy them to information that we're not privy to, all that got lost in the misinform field of misinformation that they were in. And it wasn't because I was an Xbox guy at the time, as my homie Dirk Griggity would say, Xbox guy. It wasn't because of that, um, you know, in their cover. It's just, even though they were being critical of Xbox, in the way they were doing it was just misinformed. Now, I don't have to agree with your review of games or your taste of games in order for me to appreciate your podcasting and your or your talk radio work. I still don't agree with, IGN on what they like. But at least now I think it comes from a place of knowledge. I think they become be- better stewards of doing due diligence. And Podcast Unlocked has become a way better product because of it. So I listen to Rebel FM, Podcast Unlocked, and GTR every week. I don't miss an episode of those uh, podcasts. Among the other stuff that I listen to. But as far as the mainstream stuff, and there could be some other ones out there I just haven't been privy to. But all the other ones, they're and I'm not gonna name them, but they're 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 just they're just bad. <laughs> they're bad. I'll just leave it at that. Um Little Shady at 26. Yo, what's up? What's up? Appreciate you. Um 
So with that being said, that was Gamer Tag Radio, episode 994. Um, it was, let me see, I'm going to drop this all in the chat right here. It was via Radio Public. Let me copy the link. Copy the link right here. That's the link to it right there. And it's, I want to say around, now I'm going to have to change this. It's like 23 minutes. I want to see 23 minutes and maybe 45 seconds, 23 minutes and 50 seconds into the show. You might want to listen to it. Ooh, 23 now, let me do that again. That didn't come out right. 23, I hit the enter button by accident. 23 minutes, and I'll say 45 seconds into the show. All right? So definitely check that out. It was a great podcast, great show as usual. And if you're not listening to them, you're missing out bigly. Um, now... Here's my thoughts, <laughs> despite all that. I do think it was a great response from both of them. It was a great response. And, you know, with that, you could see why, agree or disagree, this is like one of my top podcasts within the mainstream providers. Uh, that said, I, I, I disagree. I disagree with, with, with that assertion that they gave. And I think that this kind of confirms the concerns that I spoke of on that call uh, that many have in gaming. And it's okay. You know, again, diversity of thought and it spawns a lot of conversation. To to the notions that were brought up in that clip, I, I say this. Having fun alone isn't good enough when... I'm buying a $600 box or five to $600 box for innovative experiences. If I'm not getting that for that person purpose, then why do I upgrade? I could quote unquote have fun on the other system. You see what I'm saying? I can quote unquote have fun. Let's just say if I have a PlayStation, I don't have an Xbox and I'm interested in what Xbox has to offer. I can quote unquote have fun and go get me an Xbox One S on the cheap or get a sad on the cheap used if it's just about having fun. I'm not... If having fun... Like, just having a good time with the game. And again, I'm not saying that having fun means nothing. Don't, don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. We're not, I'm not getting into Death Stranding territory where a game doesn't have to be fun. It definitely has to be fun. But that's a staple of a game, and that should be a given, that it's, it's fun. But when we're talking about launch games for new expensive hardware, it better be fun, and it better be innovative, and it better utilize the innovative capabilities of said hardware. Think about it like this. Again, one, I'm buying a $600 box. That's likely the price of the Xbox One. Even if it's $500, i am buying a $500 box that is flooded with games that I can get on cheaper alternatives, what, albeit new or used. Two, if I am one of the people that got money to burn and I'm looking for just that innovative experience, what is my need to get an Xbox? I'll just get a PlayStation 5 instead because they will have experiences that are possible only on their new tech. Now, my friends at Gamer Tag Radio and a lot of people say, well, fine, Xbox doesn't care where you play their games. But here's the kicker. Say I'm interested into the next generation. I buy a PlayStation 5. And let's say I have an X. And it looks better than my X. And then I'm getting innovative experiences that can't, I can't get off my X or my PlayStation 4. So guess where, when that new AAA multiplat comes out, guess where I'm getting it? I'm getting it for the PlayStation 5. My X gets no more love from me. 
Let's rewind back to when I was talking about my brother. My brother is a big PC guy. He's not, he, the, the biggest he's ever been on console was the 360 era. That was the biggest you ever got him on console. And the OG Xbox, I'll say, but it was really the 360 era, right? When we converted from our OG Xboxes and he started playing that one 360 that I brought home, he never looked back because there was experiences on there that he couldn't get off the OG Xbox, even though he was more familiar with the games, even though we just bought a boatload of games that we had on there that we didn't even finish. He did not care. The Praise, The Perfect Dark, The Quakes with the 50 levels, Call of Duty 2s. Stuff being done on these new, on this new hardware that couldn't be replicated on the older hardware. He was now spoiled of that experience. Give you another example. Destiny. We were all, me. it was me, my brother, and a friend of ours that's a developer. Developer for a big company. I won't put his business out there, but a big gaming company. Hook me up with some stuff, but I'm, I'm not even going to get into that and get him in trouble. <laughs> um, that being said, give me one second. That being said, Um, we were all supposed to stay on PC and destiny was doing that for us. I mean, we, we were all supposed to stay on the 360 and we were all going to upgrade via PC. I was the, my, my, my brother Ben had his piece, always had a PC, always had a PC, even in the nineties. When I used to look at my brother and say, why the hell are you playing on this? Even though in the early nineties, I had a Tandy, uh, 1000. Well, we had a Tandy 1000. And uh, I love that. I then kind of reverted back to console and he stayed on PC. Right. And he was playing stuff like Doom and I, it was just weird. I was, I wasn't into, I wasn't even the first person game. I wasn't into that. I was just, I was strictly the 2D side scroll or whatever it was presented to you on the console. That's what I was sticking with. Right. And then, um, he's always had a, a, a PC. So, with that said, um, we were all supposed to graduate to this current generation that we're in via PC because he played on PC. The friend of his that was the developer that, you know, I befriended to played on PC. I had just got me a PC. My brother helped me put it together too. We went and ramshacked all these parts and got them cheap and got a great gigabyte motherboard and put it together. And it was my first time with the nuance PC experience post steam on that, at that type of level. And I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Bioshock infinite was my first game into that level. And I never played games at that 60 frames like that consistently. And even though I hated the game, I couldn't put it down because the feel and the experience of it. So we were all going to migrate to PC. And I broke the pack because Destiny was like, all right, we're getting new content. And if you want that new content, you got to get the new consoles. You got to get a PlayStation 4 and Xbox. And my brother and his friend was just like, you know what? We're going to hold it out. We're just going to keep grinding with what's here until we upgrade to PC. Destiny's definitely going to PC. And then when I found out that the first Destiny had no plans of going to PC whatsoever, I said, oh, no. Then I started playing more games on my PC and I found out that there were a lot of cheats and hacks and stuff on PC. And even in, on the multiplayer realm, and I'm like, if I get games like The Division, which was my most anticipated game going into the next generation, into this generation from the last one, if I get games like The Division and I'm playing in that dark zone that they propose and people are cheating, I'm going to take my PC and I'm going to launch it out the window. So I took those two things into consideration and I bought an Xbox One. You know what I'm saying? So let's just say if you're someone 
that isn't like me, that didn't give him, my brother and his friend and a lot of other people that just said Xbox is not giving us games that we like. We don't care. The system seems trash. But then they saw the Series X and they want to pick it up. What is their incentive to picking up a Series X at launch if the gameplay is going to be similar? The only place that you can go to get somewhat of a, 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 a of a resemblance of next generation, or not resemblance, but a somewhat of a, of a sign of next generation gameplay is PlayStation 5. And if you get a PlayStation 5, like how I got an Xbox One, I told my brother and his friend, don't worry about it. We're going to still play on the 360 and I'll still do crossplay because you could go back and forth. And guess what? When I got my first taste of Destiny on the Xbox One with those better looking graphics and the better way to play, I never came back. Never. Ca I lied to them. They, they were so angry with me. I never came back. And that's what's going to happen. If I get a PlayStation 5 and the new Assassin's Creed Ragnarok and the new Madden 2K and all the other stuff I can play on there, I'm going to look at it on that box and say, I'm not going back to this X because I'm not, I'm not going back to the Xbox One X. I'm not getting a Series X because what's the point? I'm getting nuanced experiences here. And if I end up buying a PlayStation 5 opposed to the Xbox, Xbox is finit. It is finit. And there's now rumors that the Xbox Series S could come out the following year to give people an incentive to get into the ecosystem on a chip. No, why would I go from a 4K 60 machine to a 1440p 60 machine? Stop. Stop. Xbox is therefore ejected me from their ecosystem and they're not even realizing it. So if I'm not looking back at my Xbox One X, then guess what happens? My incentive for Game Pass drops. Then guess what I do? I'm not paying for once. If I've done the loaded up till 20, whatever, I say, forget it. I don't care. I don't need this. And everybody didn't do that. That has Game Pass. But guess what? It, 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 if the, the incentive for even Game Pass goes away and I, and I cancel the service. And I don't continue to support this ecosystem. Here's the nitty gritty before I move on. This is tech. There is always and should be always enticers at launch to sustain people or convert you over to a new ecosystem. If Xbox wants to keep me in the Xbox ecosystem, then that Series X better have some innovative experiences on there just like how the 360 did and even the Xbox One did. That I can't get anywhere else. Or if they want to convert me over, if they want to convert me, if they want to do the more difficult thing, then convert me over from the PlayStation. Because let's be real, as Cold Blood Sensei alluded to, everybody doesn't have the ability to buy multiple consoles. The majority of gamers out here for the first three or four years are going to have what? At least the first three or four years are going to have what? One console. When they convert from the PlayStation 4 to the next generation or the, or the Xbox One X or S, whatever they have, to the next generation, guess what? They're trading in that old console for the new one. And if you want a piece of that bigger pie, which is the casual market, there better be an experience on it that they feel like they can't get nowhere else for those casuals that are going to get stuff at launch. And there are some of them that do that. So don't give me this lily nilly BS about, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter because this is what the Xbox wants you to do. Xbox don't understand what they need you to do, <laughs> period. What they need you to do is look at them at the launch of their next generation and say, oh, 
that looks like it got some stuff on there that I'm not going to be able to do. Not just see, but do, but do anywhere else. Do y'all want to know what the deciding factor of the, this generation's launch was? Really, do y'all want to know? Because it wasn't exclusives. And it wasn't necessarily 1080p can make you a better gamer. I talked about this last week. Where can I play the most sought after applications or games? Or where can I access the most sought after applications and games via, via this hardware? At the most reasonable price. What was the most sought after applications and hardware in the 360 era at launch were games like Call of Duty 2. You know what I'm saying? And then rolling up right after that were games like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Gears. And then the Mass Effects and, the, and it just rolled in from that. And it was you picking up a perfect dark, which everybody had. It was you picking up that game and saying, oh, this definitely does have a different feel and different capabilities than my PlayStation 2 or even my original Xbox. This is dope. Fast forward to the PlayStation 4 era, this generation. Xbox had way more exclusives. I think the general consensus is the exclusives they had were better than what Sony had to offer. I think Sony even believed that. They said, yeah, our, our exclusive lineup is sparse, but hold on, give us some time. We're going to get there, baby. But the first few years, it was sparse. First two or three years, it was sparse. Right? But what made the PlayStation 4 dominate even after Xbox dropped the price, even after Xbox took the, the camera out, what made it start to separate itself from the Xbox? Because it had the most sought after and desired games at the best experience possible for the most reasonable price. I remember walking into stores and people say, Witcher 3, Ghost Recon, uh, uh, not Ghost Recon, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, and all those games that were out then, those premier games, they look, play, and feel better on the PlayStation 4. Ah, when Halo comes out, yeah, you know, of course you're going to want an Xbox for Halo. But Witcher 3, oh man. Call of Duty Ghosts, oh man, that NBA 2K, oh man. So access to the most sought after experiences with the applications of software were, sought, were, were in the hands of PlayStation 4 and the perception of the community. Now we're going into this generation and we have to ask ourselves, What's going to be the most sought after application? I already know that PlayStation is, you know, considered leagues ahead with their, their software. Is Halo Infinite going to be that grand to where it's the must get game? It has to be. Because if not, if you're living and dying off of just power, you're going to fail. So the Xbox Series X, if Halo Infinite doesn't do it, then they better have some cool features, et cetera, that'll pull something that you can't do anywhere else on the Xbox when you can, I don't know. I don't know. I can't even think of anything. Stream and get gold nuggets to pop out of the machine. It ha something has to be, if they don't have exclusive content, that takes uh, the, uh, 
takes advantage of the box. And again, I know it's launched. You're not going to get, it's not going to tap it out. But again, I told you, I get, I've given you examples of launch titles that made you feel like, oh yeah, this is a different generation. It's only going uphill from here. And it wasn't, and, they, and these experiences were not just up -rest. But if I do invest in that box, if I got older hardware, I'm not buying that stuff from that older stuff anymore. I'm getting out of that ecosystem and invested in this one. So the Series X better have something that's going to make people feel, yes, this is a next generation experience. Halo Infinite better be fantastic. Or they better have some stuff that just knocks people's socks off. And I'll close out with this. As somebody that is a Stadia zealot, <laughs> because I love the experience. I love getting the cost of 60 frames per second. You know what I'm saying? I love the ease of use. And I love the fact that it's not taxing on my hardware to play these games, have them look good on the stream. You know what I'm saying? And me enjoy it. Enjoy the output of the game. I love that about Stadia. But the problem with Stadia's mass conception on the market is that they don't have a perk that really makes somebody say, I'm leaving my ecosystem to go here. People, console gamers just don't care that much about 60 frames per second across the board, particularly on older games. Yes, it's cheaper, but even though it's cheaper, it's an additional entry price. It's an additional price for what? Older games. So without its features or without exclusive content, what's the point? I get it. That being said, this is the beta phase. The developers from Tequila, or the CEO, excuse me, of Tequila Works explaining to you why it was never Stadia's goal to capture worldwide acclaim right now anyway. They're collecting data. He explained it to you in pure detail. If y'all don't want to listen to MM2K, I don't care. But listen to the people that have their hands on the pulse. Everything that I've been proclaiming for the last few months with Stadia, the CEO of Tequila Works come out and says the exact same thing. That they're, they, they are consumed with data. That's what this launch is about. That's what this soft launch or this, this early access is about, is them collecting data. But while they're collecting data and they don't have any incentive for the mass market, whether they want it or not, the mass market is not going to hop on this thing. So when Stadia does go full launch, they got to have something in their hand that's going to make people say, oh, yes, they have something exclusive going on over there that is that makes me want to hop from my ecosystem and invest in there. Whether it's solely or additionally. So they have to keep that in mind. So with that said, before we move on, I just want to say that I appreciate that clip that we played because we need a lot of that. We need a diversity of thought and a, and a well in-depth discussion. That being said, I couldn't more disagree. I couldn't more disagree because if the moniker becomes this is a great game but I can still get it on the older, older hardware. But I'm getting not only great games because they're going to be porting their great games over too. PlayStation is, but I'm getting exclusive experiences on this box. Guess what I'm picking? I'm picking that box. And you may say, oh, well, Xbox doesn't care. They should. Because in order for me to get that new box, guess what I'm trading in? My Xbox. And let's not live in imaginary land where we believe that everybody can afford multiple gaming platforms or they have gaming PC rigs just laying around the house. That is a farce. So Microsoft better be concerned because if I trade in my Xbox, guess what I'm not investing in anymore? Game Pass. It's going to be there, but what am I going to play it on? I got to play it on something. What am I going to play it on? Exactly. That being said, let me get back into my chat. 
Uh, <laughs> Cold Blood Sensei says, Gamer Tag has no angry flat earther. They already sound bored by their own talk. I fell asleep, my boy. <laughs> stop, man. Stop. Golly. Don't do that, Cold. <laughs> it's great. It's, sometimes we ain't got to deal with the, the cursing and the swearing and all that stuff, man. Sometimes we can. Can't we just enjoy it for me? <laughs> Stop. Can't we just enjoy information, man? Sometimes I like declaring that plan in the back. Z would say, y'all playing the clearing that in the background. I sometimes I appreciate that. All right, and let's go to the chat. Um, Cold Blood says, 40 was the sweet, 400 was the sweet spot for the PlayStation 4. Xbox had no chance for the start. 500 at launch, that's what I keep telling everyone, but they say it's all about the power. BS, I tell you. Absolutely. We've already went, went, went over what were the vices that got people into the other generations. And it wasn't power alone. It was the overall grand experience that they provided. And I, I repeat, X, somebody plugged in the Xbox. I hope you're listening. If I am someone that is interested in the next gen experience, and I and, and and I'm more fall on the casual side. Not everybody that buys a game at launch, a console at launch, isn't a casual. Now mid gen refreshes, yeah. Mid gen refreshes is all about the hardcore. I did see a bunch of casuals when I was in line, but not enough to undo the onslaught of PlayStation Four going on sale. <laughs> when I got my, I'm talking about when I purchased my X. When I purchased my X, I did see some casuals because they had questions. They wanted, you know. But uh, that was that, you know what I mean? That being said, uh, here's what's going to happen. If I got money to burn and I can get a next gen, because a lot of people are tired of this generation already. They were waiting for this to go. A lot of people looked at the X and said, no, I'm going to wait. And now Xbox could have inadvertently hyped a lot of people by getting them excited by the Series X, bringing attention to them, but having that attention diverted to PlayStation. Because just like I said last week, Xbox was the hottest thing off the presses. Now when I'm filling in my gamer tags, my game tags and stuff on YouTube, it's no longer the Series X is at the top of the list. It's PlayStation 5 and Godfall. And I'm seeing Godfall track even higher than Hellblade did, even though I did a poll on Twitter. I th- I don't know if that poll was, ske- was skewed because a whole bunch of Xbox people took over that poll. It was like 85 to 15 in favor of Hellblade. But I'm seeing anticipation and excitement for Hellblade track higher. I mean... Uh, for Godfall track higher than I've ever seen Hellblade ever do, period. If you're a YouTuber, you know what I'm talking about. If you provide content, you know what I'm talking about. When you're putting in your tags and you got that tube buddy and it gives you the track number on how, you know, what the, you know, how interested and, and how many times people have hit that search engine subject, the, 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 the top trending uh, search items are not series X anymore. It's Godfall in PlayStation 5, and those things are tracking higher than the Series X and Hellblade has ever done. So what Xbox maybe have done inadvertently is by them getting excite, people excited over next generation because everybody was mom, they got them excited. Oh, I want that Xbox Series X. Then they hear that the Series X ain't going to have new innovative experiences. Oh, but then here comes PlayStation sliding in, even though they still have a lot to uh, talk about, but then that curiosity feeds the cat. And then they drop this information about Godfall. Oh yes. We in contrast are going to have innovative, exclusive experiences for our next gen console. And now, if uh, now anticipation is flying through the roof, so Xbox could have done that inadvertently. So that was my take. Uh, 
on that whole call. Great call again, and I and, and I put it in the chat. Big ups to Gamertag Rated. I was episode nine nine four. Um, I'll put the link out there again for people like Cold Blood Sensei that loved it. And go about twenty three minutes and forty five seconds into it. If you want to hear the call, but no, listen to the whole episode, preferably, but if you just want to focus on that call. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I have a bunch of subject matters, but I don't, I'm, we're not going to cover them all today because we're almost at the two hour mark. I am going to open the Skype line. Let me make sure the Skype line is working. I'll call it myself. I'll call it myself. I should always do this, but I was running a little bit late today because I saw that Godfall uh, gameplay and I was highly interested in that and I said oh, okay so if y'all want to call in the phone number is I'm going to put this out here in the chat for those of you in the continental United or if you want to call internationally <laughs> if you want to do that feel free phone number is 724-739-3612 why can't I just have Discord chat? Isn't it easier? I might do both. Um, I did that at first, Cold Blood, and nobody participated. And I don't know if you remember when I went over to the phone number because a lot of people, a lot of y'all don't know how to use Discord for some reason. I don't know why. You know what I mean? But yeah, I could definitely do that. So maybe I'll do both. Because yeah, I had offered... To throw people into Discord, nobody wanted to do it. And then when I activated it, then then Cold Blood, when I said, let's do uh, the phone number. No, 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 when I was doing the Discord, people were like, well, you should do a phone number. So I went and bought a phone number. And then people just started calling in left and right. So I don't know what it is. I mean, I would prefer to do Discord. But I, but that's a great point. I'm going to do something like that. And we, we and, and uh, what I'm, what we're going to do, and I might, asked to do that today is we have a pnts network discord and i might drop even though this is a broadband bully product the hard knock digital culture i'll get into more of that at another time but um we we might do something in the discord where people can sit in a waiting room and then we'll just drag them in and, and plop them back out you know so more to come great great, great suggestion cold blood but again if you want to call in 724-739-3612 um while we're doing that, let me read Cold Blood Sensei's uh, chat. He says, get a PS5 and a PC. You're set for the next seven years. Microsoft themselves said they don't care about sales of the box. And that's where they're going to hurt themselves more than anything because by them not caring Cold Blood, when I go, if I'm a casual and I go to trade in, go get that PlayStation 5, I'm trading in my Xbox. And I don't have a PC laying around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's it. Xbox is done in my house. It's done. Right. And as that casual, I can communicate better with other casuals than you and I can because we're not casuals. And, and sometimes we get sometimes we get disconnected from 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 those people at, the, at that level of gaming. Um, so if I'm a casual and I got the PlayStation five and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is way better than that X that I had. I'm glad I traded that shit in. Then guess what? The other casuals are going to do. They're coming in. They're, they're filing. You know, they're coming in uh, rank and file to do the same thing that I did. That's what happened with the, um, with the PlayStation 4. I had a lot of my friends that were casuals on the 360 level that, you know, I would feed them gaming information and then before I could blink and say cell processor, I mean, before I could blink and say Jaguar processor, <laughs> these mugs went and hopped on the PlayStation 4 bandwagon like there was no tomorrow. And all it took was one casual to get it at launch. Yeah, I went and got the PlayStation 4 for all the other casuals to, to, to fall rank and file. That's how the game goes. I don't know why someone at Xbox doesn't understand that and doesn't understand the importance of at least just having one piece of software, a second part. I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying for the sake, for Xbox's sake that they have one piece of software because all you're going to do is have these same people, same 40 of the same 40 million that'll slowly converge from the Xbox One X, they're going to trade in their X, get a Series X, and the player base is not going to grow. And if y'all think each of these 2 billion gamers is going to do it, Project X Cloud is not going to be ready for retail for another couple of years. It has latency issues. It is not 
a good pro. I'm not saying that in contrast to Stadia. I'm just saying period. In contrast to Shadow Blade, in contrast to NVIDIA, it is not a great product at this point in time. It might be a year or two before it gets feasible. Period. All right. So while we're there, okay, so with that said, if you want to call in, I just want to, I'll just breeze over these topics. Well, you know what? Um, Maybe I'll bring them up in another podcast because, yeah, we're hitting the two-hour mark. We're already at the two-hour mark. So the game delays are Final Fantasy VII. Um, that's been moved to March 3rd to April 10th. Marvel's Avengers, May 14th to September 4th. Cyberpunk 2077, April 16th to September 17th. And Dying Like 2 to Spring 2020. Um, and we're, I'll talk about this next episode, but it's just, it's, it's a hate of these games uh, that come out early. That causes the hate of the games that came out in 2019 early that causes. I'm gonna talk about that. Also, we have Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. Um, it's a rumor, folks. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if y'all seen my videos, I don't think it'll have an impact. It's not gonna have an impact on what y'all do as far as being out here in these consoles, war streets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, think about it. Like I said in my video, 20 million people, maybe at most, own both. PlayStation 5 and PCs that primarily game on PC. I'm going to give you that litmus again. If I get, if I primarily game on PC and I have a PlayStation 5, I'm going to give you a generous figure. Maybe 20 million of the 100 million PlayStation 4s that are out there I are of people that fit under that litmus. So by eliminating the box being bought by At most, those 20 million people, guess what? PlayStation is still ahead of Xbox. So you still get your little bragging rights for NPD. Then on top of that, that allows the PC gamer to buy more PlayStation hardware. I mean, software. That's going to give them more money. That's going to help subsidize the games that you like. So this anger over games from... PlayStation going to PC to me is silly. And that's why I played that whole clip from Gamer Tag Radio because I thought it was prevalent to that discussion. And um, E3. E3 is hella fight important. We got to have an E3. Um, what it does is it spawns um, a, a contrast factor in gaming that you don't get from these shows having their own solo, sh- I mean, these, these companies having their own solo shows, right? And what it also, and because of that contrasting nature, it holds these companies' feet to the fire. These companies want to be able to do what they want to do, have you just fall in rank and file without their feet being on the, set on the fire. That's why they don't want to come to E3. This 8 million or 40 million, whatever they got to pay, that's just drops in the bucket of these companies' advertisement money. It's nothing. It's not. I can understand a small publisher, so that's different. But I'm talking someone like Sony, that's a drop in the bucket for them. They don't care about that. What they care about is, I don't feel like competing. I don't even feel like doing it. I got, P- I got anticipation at all, all time high. Why mess it up? Why put that at risk? Even though as a company, I should always be held to task to show and prove y'all are out here on Twitter fighting for our good name every day. And we just, we just give you the bare minimum period. We give you the bare minimum because Xbox is so bad. PlayStation has given you a horrible 2019, a horrible tw- and they And they don't feel like they got it compensate for it <laughs> they ain't gonna compensate for it at all that's how bad xbox is doing so they're giving you the bare minimum and by them not showing up at e3 and you saying it's okay you're telling them that we ain't gonna compensate as long as we do better than xbox that's fine i can do better than xbox i can give you an etch sketch and come up with some i don't know some sock puppet games and do better than Xbox. That's not saying much. 
So we need E3 to keep these game companies honest. Not do they need E3. I don't give a shit if they need E3. I don't care about them. They're not buying these games for me. I got to buy them myself. So to keep these game companies honest, to make sure that they're hitting milestones, to make sure that they're at least working to provide us, to, 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 to working to um, keep our mind share uh, intact, E3 is important. That's it from your boy. Whole Blood Sensei says, if day and date is what Sony is going to do, then I'm going to change to PC. No excuse not to. If you're a normal PC, now, Cold Blood Sensei, I know you game regularly on PC, but for the average console gamer, they don't. It ain't going to PC. <laughs> They're not doing it. They they love plug and play, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. They don't, they, they don't have the patience to deal with what you have to deal with on PC. And I'm not saying that it's a horrible experience. It's just, it's different. And the thing with consoles is the console is built specifically for you to game on it. So it's straight, it's strictly plug and play. All right. No phone calls. I got lighter cold blood since they said I put everybody to sleep playing that clip. No, no, bro. That's just, that's, that's, it's a great podcast. And again, check them out. Uh, they do shows sporadically throughout the week. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to. And with that being said, that is it from your boy MM2K. I appreciate all of y'all as usual. And check me out the day after tomorrow for all my Stadia fans. <laughs> Cold Blood Sensei, this is for you. Check me out. We're going to be doing uh, uh, the Stadia Stream Connect. That channel is growing, man. We're about to hit 100 subscribers. It almost took me a year. It almost took me a year to get 100 people. And we got a, almost 100 people already in, in less than two months. So that channel is growing. I know Neethos was trying to be a smart ass last night on Best Damn Podcast. He said, hey, baby, you can't. How's your, how's your street at Stadium Connect going? It's going back. It's, it's growing faster than my, than my main channel. <laughs> that little, little bastard. That's my, my homie. Big up to him and go follow Neethos too. He's doing a lot of great things out here and he's back to making videos too. So support my brother. And with that being said, I appreciate all of y'all. And as always, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.